Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingerSlyShop.com bringing you another video today. Today we're going to tie a dry fly and uh, it's one for an upcoming hatch we got coming out here. But before we get into that, we want to announce our winner. We were having a contest on Instagram. We're giving away this really cool fly box full of a bunch of my flies and uh, we picked the winner for it. The winner is Matt C869 on Instagram. I'll be reaching out to him and uh, getting in contact with him about how to get his flies. So thank you everybody for getting onto Instagram, following us on there, and a couple of you even got onto Facebook and liked us on there. So we thank everybody that uh, reached out to us on our social media, and we look forward to doing more projects like this. I got another one lined up, and uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger, so stay tuned for that. Uh, now, let's get into our video. Okay, for today's fly... We're going to tie a granum pattern. And granums is one of my favorite hatches of the year. It's the first real big hatch of the year for us here in central Pennsylvania. The first one that I go after, we have blue winged all those, but this is the first big concentrated hatch. When it comes off, last year we was fishing the hatch, it come off so heavy that I pointed out to my dad, I said, look there on the water, and it looked like foam coming down the water. It was actually the shucks of the um you know, the the emerged caddises that come out and flew off out of the shock and flew up into the into the air and stuff. It was really cool to see that many insects on the water at one time. It actually looked like you would look downstream and you would see them blowing upstream at you and it looked like snow flying up the river. There was that many of them. Um, this is a great pattern to imitate that. One of the things, is the granum that we have here in our area is very dark bodied. Um, the wet fly we tie, we use peacock. So you can tell it's a very dark pattern. Um, we're going to use some brown, but we're going to put some dark brown thread under it, which will make it even darker, make it almost a black color. I didn't really want to go black, but closest to black as I could. Let's get into tying it here now. We're going to tie this on a Firehole 316 uh, Nymphy Merger hook. It's got a nice curve to it. I like that in this hook. And um, we'll start out by putting that in our vise. The size I'm tying it in is a size 12, and uh, for the thread, what I'm going to start out with, I I always like to fish with a with the granums with an egg egg on the back of it. Um, they have a green egg, a little egg sac on the back of them, and um, even my wet flies, I like to have on my wet flies a little green egg sac on the back of it. It's I don't know I just gives them something to key on and it, it seems to work for me so I like to have the green egg back there what I'm going to do is go about a quarter of the way through the bend I guess you would say and just make a nice round ball of thread I'm using my finger here to stop the thread at to ball that up you could use the uh, strand of thread that was left over if you want now I'm going to just run my thread up there and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my brown thread. Okay, now rather than um, whip finishing that green thread off, I'm just going to come in and wrap over it with my brown thread and cut both of those tags off there, both the green and the brown. And it just saves me a little bit of time in my whip finish. Okay, then we'll wrap our brown thread back to that egg and stop right in front of it so we leave the egg on there and then I'm going to take some stretch tubing um, I'm going to use some brown stretch tubing okay from Wopsy small size and uh, just like a four inch piece of it or so doesn't have to be real long of course you can cut a long one and then just use it scraps and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it in my fingers with my scissors there and kind of lay it in there and I'm going to cut a nice sharp angle and there you can see how I angled that off there real nice and make a nice point with it. That will allow me to tie it down tight. I'm going to tie it down by that point. And then I'm going to pull it back so I don't have too much, too much body build up in there. And I'm going to wrap it right back to that egg. And then I'm going to make sure I have all that green thread covered up. And wrap it back up there about two maybe two and a half eye widths behind the eye and then we're just gonna wind up our stretch tubing and just make a nice ribbed body with this stretch tubing now like I said 
I wanted this fly a little darker, so I used the dark brown under there, I, but I didn't want it to be a complete black, so I didn't go with a black tube or black thread under it. But I wanted it to be real dark, so I went brown over brown. And we're just going to wrap that up there to where I said there, about two, a good healthy two eye widths behind the eye. That's going to give us lots of room to make our wing on this fly. Okay, then we just get, make sure we get that wrapped down good. And our body is complete. And you can see how nice that little egg looks back behind her. Next thing we're going to do is uh, take some Campara Dun Deer, medium done. And the wing on this is what we're about to make. And I'm just going to take a little patch off of this. And it doesn't take much. You can see this is just a little clump here. And that's actually too much. You see how that's compared to the body. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch that in my fingers. I'm going to pull out all the underdub and stuff. All the fine hairs. And while I'm doing that I'm thinning it down just a little bit. To get it where I want it. About how much I want in there. Okay there you can see how I got it pretty well cleaned out of all the the small stuff underneath. Now this stuff is pretty short. Um, the section of deer hair that I got here is pretty short so you have to be careful with it. You're not going to tie real big flies with it. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our hair stacker and we're going to get all of those tips together on there. So we just put it in the stacker. Take, We'll smack the tube off our hand here a couple times. And what will happen is when we pull that out, it will have all those tips lined up. And you can see them lined up there in the video. So we just pinch the tips and pull them out. Now our back end, you see, is going to be all uneven. That's not a big problem. We want all these tips lined up. Okay? We're going to just take these in our hand and pinch them to where we get at the length where we want it to sit on the hook. Where we want it to sit on this hook is just barely past the bend of the hook. Okay, just barely past our eggs. We don't want it way over the back. We want it just past the eggs, not too long. And then I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to take and I'm going to pinch the thread in my fingers, and I'm going to pull it down on top. And I'm going to do that like twice. Pinch it and pull it down. By doing that, it allows me to tighten it up on top and keep the hair on the top where I need it. And then I can take and make a couple wraps back. And then we're just going to take and pinch all this up and trim it off. And I want to cut that at a good sharp angle because I want this to taper down for me. Taper right down to that eye. Okay, now you can see how much, how much room I left extra on here. I'm, I'm down to about an eye, eye and a half on the front here. Okay, that is going to be covered up with our CDC next. Now, the Stonfo clip is what I usually use when I use my CDC, and it works great. I did just happen to pick up a magic tool from uh, Petagene, and um, we're going to use the, the Petagene tool on this one, but it's the same thing as your Stonfo clip. Okay, don't be, if you already have the Stonfo, this works just the same. We're going to clamp the feather in it just the same. And, uh, but what we're going to do. If I was doing it, um, I'll do it the way I would do it with the Stonfo, and I would use two feathers back to back. I'm going to use a dun colored feather here, and I need to get a nice one out. I'm actually going to take two of them. If I use my magic tool, I only need to use one, but I'll, in case you don't have a magic tool, I'll do it the other way and use two. Actually, this one here is a really big, you can see how thick that feather is, and that's going to be plenty. And what I want to do is I want to pull the fibers and stand them up like that, okay? And the feathers on the bottom are a little bit shorter here. You can see I like the feathers on the bottom side of this. So I'm going to use the bottom side of this. And that's going to give me plenty of CDC fiber for this fly. And I'm going to just take and clamp this down. There you can see how I clamped it down and I put it parallel... Put the shaft of the feather parallel, let me get it in front here, the shaft of the feather parallel with the, the clamp, okay? 
I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim right along the shaft of that feather. So it'll leave all those fibers trapped inside and sticking out. Now you want to do this also towards one of the ends of the clip. I didn't get it the best towards the end of the clip, but I was pretty close. You see there how I ended up towards this end of the clip. Okay, for the thread, I should point out the brown thread I'm using is 140 denier. Okay, ultra thread, I like it because I'm able to split it with my fingers. Um, I know I do a lot of dubbing loops in my videos, but on this one, I'm going to take my bodkin and I'm going to split the, the thread. This is the way I like to work with CDC, is by splitting the thread rather than doing a dubbing loop. Because I think I have a little bit more control over it this way. And then we're just going to take the fibers that are sticking out. We're going to slip it in between that split thread. And I'm just going to slide it down over the end. And pop it off to where it pops on. You can see how it popped onto that thread right there. Now I'm going to turn my vise a little bit to get this down below. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and spin my thread. So it takes and wraps that up in there, okay? And what it'll do is it'll make a nice braided rope, in essence, with this CDC. It'll make a nice CDC brush. You can see how fibrous it is there. And then I'll just tease all these fibers back. And that's going to be a little bit too much for this fly, but we'll make it work. And as I'm wrapping it on, I'm teasing them back. Okay, and as I get it up there to the eye, like I said, that's a little bit too much. So we're going to pull some of these back ones out. And then I'm going to just pull these back and finish off a nice head here. And just make a nice clean head not too big and we're just going to whip finish it off now these CDC fibers are all different lengths you want them to be that way you don't want a nice uniform look like you cut them off um, you want it to be buggy looking that's the the goal of it the, the great thing about this is is the CDC fibers will trap air bubbles and it'll just look really really natural and it'll float really nice too. Okay, so as I pull these back, I got them trimmed pretty well. If you have any long fibers, the best thing to do when you have long CDC fibers is rather than um, cut them with scissors, it's best to pinch them in your fingers and pull them shorter. And that looks pretty well there. I like that fly. That looks pretty good and nice profile to it. Um, when you put another little trick, when you're tying down the deer hair, if some of it slides around the bottom, trim it off on the bottom because you want this body. Oh, I see I lost my I lost my uh, egg sack there. So I'm going to hit that with a touch of glue after the video is done. I'm just going to slide that up there, hit that with a little bit of glue, and we'll be back in order with that. So that's all that's to this CDC granum. Um, pretty easy fly to tie. Get one of those Stonfo clips, or if you can find a pet Petajon tool, pick one up. They're very nice. And uh, keep watching our videos, guys. Thanks for watching them. We enjoy bringing them to you. And the materials you need to tie these, you can find in our shop at wholesingersflyshop.com. Like always, we really like bringing them to you. And look at our uh, social media outlets with our YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you're constantly updated. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook so you know what's going on at the shop. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Sean Holsinger. Mm -hmm.